one of her titles is Virgin Most Powerful. And in the Old Testament, queens had a great deal of power that they exercised with the king in decision making and helping him um, in counseling him in his decision making and bringing the needs of the people to him. And that's what she has done for me before I ever knew her. Okay, was baptized at Queen of Peace and then grew up not knowing Jesus. And then when I was 21, my life was a, a wreck and I was miserable because I was so far from God and I needed him so badly. And I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to pray. I didn't know I could just talk to the Lord and um, cry out to him. But I remember the Hail Mary that I learned when I was little. And so I just would cry myself to sleep at night praying the Hail Mary. Eventually, I got out my um, this little uh, New Testament Bible that I got at my first communion that I never read, really, um, and started reading the Gospels, and I heard Jesus speaking to me and calling me to come home, to come back to Mass. And um, so I started going back to Mass at Queen of Peace, which is where I was baptized. So already Our Lady was bringing me back, and I see this as... Um, her intercession um, at the wedding feast at Cana when she says, do whatever he tells you. I didn't know it when I was reading through my Bible and listening to his words in the gospel, speaking to me, you know, this was being fulfilled, do whatever he tells you. I really needed to go to confession. So um, I went back to confession as soon as I could, which was the following weekend. The Queenship of Mary was the feast that weekend. I was so afraid. I was shaking, I was trembling, I was crying, I was hyperventilating, I was sweating, everything. But I made my confession, and I was really afraid of what the priest was going to say to me because of my confession. And uh, he said, that was a beautiful confession because it cost you everything. And then he said, this feast is for you. The feast of the queenship. This feast is for me. Okay, I didn't know what that meant either, but it was like, great, cool, this feast is for me. Well, let's celebrate. Okay. But really, I walked out of that confession a, a new woman. I was free, and I felt it, and I wanted to give my whole life to Jesus. Our Lady was really there for me, and uh, she was my mother and my friend, and the rosary was such a place of like comfort and hope for me. Before I entered the convent, I already had my three name choices picked out that I was going to ask for, but Regina was not one of them. It never even occurred to me to ask for that name. But when I was a postulant, I remember that I just felt Our Lady was calling me to ask for a different name. And I thought, well, okay, well, can you help me know what that name is? woke up the next morning and I just knew, like, Regina just came to my heart and I was like, Regina, yeah, that's it, I love it. And so because of all of these events in my life um, associated with her queenship, um, I asked for Regina and for my feast day to be August 22nd. It's uh, also a really beautiful invitation to share in her role as spiritual mother, as beloved daughter of the Father, as spouse of the Holy Spirit, um, as an intercessor for God's people. Everyone who comes to her receives grace from God, and whatever they need, they receive it through her. Um, whether it's healing, whether it's hope, whether it's um, joy in the Holy Spirit, um, knowledge of God, like all these riches come through her. And I really just would encourage anyone who's watching this, if you love Mary or if you don't know her very well, whatever, wherever you are in your relationship with her, just Begin to speak with her, um, ask her to just sit next to you, um, to join you in your tasks of the day, to teach you to pray, to help you adore her son, um, whatever, because whatever it is that God is calling you to, Mary will help you become that.